Next speaker I have is Glenn Fieldman. <clears throat> How much time do you need, Glenn? Uh, I think about three minutes. Okay. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, I would like to echo, I think, just about every other speaker here tonight and urge you to reject the EIR addendum and to require a supplemental EIR. Uh, it seems pretty clear that the addendum is inadequate under current California law because the addendum does not consider the climate change impacts of this project from the greenhouse gases that it will emit. In 2007, Senate Bill 97 amended CEQA to establish that greenhouse gas emissions and their effects are a prominent environmental issue that require analysis under CEQA. AB 32, which is California's climate change law, and its proposed scoping plan, which was, de was developed by the California Air Resources Board um, and was approved in 2008, says that land use planning and urban growth will have large uh, consequences for the state's emissions and that uh, authorities who are charged with approving developments and so forth should make efforts to see that their, their, the type of development that they approve does not increase greenhouse gas emissions. Several speakers tonight have alluded to the potential greenhouse gas impacts of the proposed development. We've got few houses that are spread out, that are very large, that are isolated from transportation and so on. The greenhouse gas impacts of building this development will of course be not just building the development, but we have to think about the greenhouse gases that will be emitted as a result of this development from years to come, partly because they're not close to transportation and it's, it's really not very conceivable that public transportation is going to come close to these houses. These houses are low density and so on. So it, it seems that um, to be consistent with California law and, and the direction that California policy is going, that United States policy will probably go, that global policy will probably go, that a development project like this really ought to be carefully evaluated in view of its greenhouse impacts. Second very brief comment I want to make has to do with climate change, biodiversity and the survival of this butterfly. A mounting pile of studies shows that climate change is a huge threat to species survival. Um, in fact, it's one of the reasons why scientists are now, now giving us really ominous figures like we may lose a third of all species on the planet or even more than that by 2100. Uh, climate change comes atop the other threats to species including habitat loss and fragmentation. Um, one, of, one of the ways that species have to cope with climate change is to go into it with as large, as healthy, and as genetically diverse a population as possible. And secondly, to be able to move. And earlier speakers, Ken's video, I think demonstrated to the extent to which the movement of this butterfly is going to be restricted the extent to which separate populations of the butterfly won't be able to contact each other in order to mate and preserve the genetic diversity of the species, which can in turn help to ensure its survival as the climate changes. So I hope the council will consider those two things. Thank you very much. Thank you, Glenn.